MSN exam for myocardial infarction and heart failure. Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the following clients first? A. The client with diabetes with a blood glucose of 95 mg slash DL. B. The client with hypertension being maintained on lisinopril. C. The client with chest pain and a history of angina. D. The client with Raynaud's disease. Answer, C. The client with chest pain and a history of angina. The client with chest pain should be seen first because this could indicate a myocardial infarction. The client in answer A has a blood glucose within normal limits. The client in answer B is maintained on blood pressure medication. The client in answer D is in no distress. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for six days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A. Myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. B. Pulmonary embolism due to deep vein thrombosis DVT. C. Anxiety attack due to worries about her baby's health. D. Congestive heart failure due to fluid overload. Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the following clients first? A. The client with diabetes with a blood glucose of 95 mg slash DL. B. The client with hypertension being maintained on lisinopril. C. The client with chest pain and a history of angina. D. The client with Raynaud's disease. Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for six days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the... Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient. Answer, A. 60 minutes.
The 60-minute interval is known as door to balloon time for performance of PTCA on a diagnosed ME patient. Question 6. Helen, a nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with A. Dopamine Drip 4 with vital signs monitored every 5 minutes. B. A myocardial infarction that is free from pain and dysrhythmias. C. A tracheotomy of 24 hours in some respiratory distress. D. A pacemaker inserted this morning with intermittent capture. Question 3. What is the primary reason? Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the following clients first? A. The client with diabetes with a blood glucose of 95 mg slash DL. B. The client with hypertension being maintained on lisinopril. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for 6 days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A. Myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. B. Pulmonary embolism. Answer, A. 60 minutes. Question 6. Helen. A nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with A. Dopamine Drip 4 with vital signs. Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the... Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for six days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A. Myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. B. Pulmonary embolism due to deep vein thrombosis DVT. C. Answer. A. 60 minutes. The 60 minute interval is known as door to balloon time for performance of PTCA on a diagnosed ME patient. Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Question 6. Helen, a nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with A. Dopamine Drip 4 with vital signs monitored every 5 minutes. B. A myocardial infarction that is free from pain and dysrhythmias. C. A tracheotomy of 24 hours in some respiratory distress. D. A pacemaker inserted this morning with intermittent capture. Answer, A. 60 minutes. 
The 60-minute interval is known as door-to-balloon time for performance of PTCA on a diagnosed ME patient. Question 3. What is the primary reason? Question 6. Helen, a nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with A. Dopamine drip 4 with vital signs monitored every 5 minutes. B. A myocardial infarction that is free from pain and dysrhythmias. C. A tracheotomy of 20. Question 12. Nursing measures for the client who has had in me include helping the client to avoid activity that results in Valsalva's maneuver. Valsalva's maneuver may cause cardiac dysrhythmias, increased venous pressure, increased intrathoracic pressure and thrombi dislodgement. Which of the following actions would help prevent Valsalva's maneuver? Have the client A. Assume a sideline position. B. Clench her teeth while moving in bed. C. Drink fluid through a straw. D. Avoid holding her breath during activity. Answer. D. Avoid holding her breath during activity. Question 13. The nurse is giving discharge teaching to a client seven days post myocardial infarction. He asks the nurse why he must wait six weeks before having sexual intercourse. What is the best response by the nurse to this question? A. You need to regain your strength before attempting such exertion. B. When you can climb two flights of stairs without problems, it is generally safe. C. Have a glass of wine to relax you, then you can't try to have sex. D. If you can maintain an active walking program, you will have less risk. Question 6. Helen, a nurse from the... Question 12. Nursing measures for the client who has had in me include helping the client to avoid activity that results in Valsalva's maneuver. Valsalva's maneuver may cause cardiac dysrhythmias increased venous pressure, increased intrathoracic pressure and thrombi dislodgement. Which of the following actions would help prevent Valsalva's maneuver? Have the client A. Assume a sideline position. B. Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Answer C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness, nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Question 15. Alzheimer's disease is the secondary diagnosis of a client admitted with myocardial infarction. Which nursing intervention should appear on this client's plan of care? A. Perform activities of daily living for the client to disease frustration. B. Provide a stimulating environment. C. Establish and maintain a routine. D. Try to reason with the client as much as possible. Question 12. Nursing measures for the cl Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. 
To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Answer, A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Answer B is incorrect because it is not a true statement. Answer Pain associated with angina is confined to the chest area is incorrect because pain associated with angina can be referred to the jaw, the left arm, and the back. Pain associated with myocardial infarction is referred to the left arm is incorrect because pain from a myocardial infarction can be referred to areas other than the left arm. Question 17. Patrick who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine A. Decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Prevents shock and relieves pain. C. Dilates coronary blood vessels. D. Helps prevent fibrillation of the heart. Question 3. What is the primary reason? Question 12. Nursing measures for the client who has had me include helping the client to avoid activity that results in Valsalva's maneuver. Valsalva's maneuver may cause cardiac dysrhythmias, increased venous pressure, increased intrathoracic pressure and thrombi dislodgement. Which of the following actions would help prevent Valsalva's maneuver? Answer. A. 60 minutes. Question 6. Helen. A nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with Question 13. The nurse is giving discharge. Answer. C. A patient with a history of ventricular tachycardia and syncope episodes. Dot an automatic internal cardiovertity fibrillator delivers an electric shock to the heart to terminate episodes of ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. This is necessary in a patient with significant ventricular symptoms, such as tachycardia resulting in syncope. A patient with myocardial infarction that resolved with no permanent cardiac damage would not be a candidate. A patient recovering well from coronary bypass would not need the device. Atrial tachycardia is less serious and is treated conservatively with medication and cardioversion as a last resort. Answer A. 60 minutes. The 60 minute interval is known as door to balloon time for performance of PTCA on a diagnosed ME patient. Question 6 Helen, a nurse from the Answer, C. 
prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness, nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Question 21. Mr. Duffy is admitted to the CCU with a diagnosis of R. Omi. He presented in the ER with a typical description of pain associated with an me, and is now cold and clammy, pale and dyspneic. He has an 4 of D5W running, and is complaining of chest pain. Oxygen therapy has not been started, and he is not on the monitor. He is frightened. During the first three days that Mr. Duffy is in the CCU, a number of diagnostic blood tests are obtained. Which of the following patterns of cardiac enzyme elevation are most common following in me? A. Scott, CK, and LDH are all elevated immediately. B. Scott rises for 6 hours after infarction with CK and LDH rising slowly 24 hours later. C. CK peaks first 12-24 hours followed by the Scott peaks in 24-36 hours and then the LDH peaks 3-4 days. D. CK peaks first and remains elevated for 1-2 to two weeks. Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the... Answer. C. CK peaks first 12-24 hours, followed by the Scott peaks in 24-36 hours and then the LDH peaks 3-4 days. Although the timing of initial elevation, peak elevation, and duration of elevation vary with sources, current literature favors letter C. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for six days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A. Myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. B. Pulmonary embolism due to deep vein thrombosis. <laughs> Question 12. Nursing measures for the client who has had in me include helping the client to avoid activity that results in Valsalva's maneuver. Valsalva's maneuver may cause cardiac dysrhythmias, increased venous pressure, Increased intrathoracic pressure and thrombi dislodgement. Which of the following actions would help prevent Valsalva's maneuver? Have the client A. Assume Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the following clients first? A. The client with diabetes with a blood glucose of 95 mg slash DL. B. The client with hypertension being maintained on lisinopril. C. The client with chest pain and a history of angina. D. The client with Raynaud's disease. Answer. C. CK peaks. Answer. C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation in the pleural space. Pulmonary edema usually results from left-sided heart failure, not an ineffective cough. Although many non-cardiac conditions may cause pulmonary edema, an ineffective cough isn't one of them. Oxygen toxicity results from prolonged administration of high oxygen concentrations. Not an ineffective cough. Question 12. Nursing measures for the Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the following clients first? 
A. The answer, C. CK peaks first 12 24 hours, followed by the Scott peaks in 24 36 hours and then the LDH peaks 3 4 days. Although the timing of initial elevation, peak elevation, and duration of elevation vary with sources, current literature favors letter C. Answer, C. 8. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of 8. Delectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation in the pleural space. Pulmonary edema usually results from left-sided heart failure, not an ineffective cough. Although many non-cardiac conditions may cause pulmonary edema, an ineffective cough isn't one of them. Oxygen toxicity results from prolonged administration of high oxygen concentrations. Question 1. The nurse should visit which of the... Answer. C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness, nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Question 6. Helen, a nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with A. Dopamine drip 4 with vital signs monitored every 5 minutes. B. A myocardial infarction that is free from pain and dysrhythmias. C. A tracheotomy of 24 hours in some respiratory Answer, A. 60 minutes Answer, C. 8. Delectasis In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction. Answer, C. A patient with a history of ventricular tachycardia and syncope episodes. An automatic internal cardioverturity fibrillator delivers an electric shock to the heart to terminate episodes of ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. This is necessary in a patient with significant ventricular symptoms, such as tachycardia resulting in syncope. A patient with myocardial infarction that resolved with no permanent cardiac damage would not be a candidate. A patient recovering well from coronary bypass would not need the device. Question 13. The nurse is giving discharge. Question 6. Helen, a nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with. Answer. A. 60 minutes. The 60 minute interval is known as door to balloon time for performance of PTCA on a diagnosed ME patient. Answer, C. 8. Delectasis.
Question 30. On the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. A football player limping and complaining of pain and swelling in the right ankle. C. A 50-year-old man. Diaphoretic and complaining of severe chest pain radiating to his jaw. D. A mother with a five year old boy who says her son has been complaining of nausea and vomited once since noon. Answer C. The client with chest. Answer A. 60 minutes. The 60 minute interval is known as door to balloon time for performance of PTCA on a diagnosed ME patient. Answer, C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation in the pleural space. Pulmonary edema usually results from left-sided heart failure, not an ineffective cough. Although many non-cardiac conditions may cause pulmonary edema, an ineffective cough isn't one of them. Oxygen toxicity results from prolonged administration of high oxygen concentration. Answer, C. CK peaks first 12-24 hours, followed by the Scott peaks in 24-36 hours and then the LDH peaks 3-4 days. Although the timing of initial elevation, peak elevation, and duration of elevation vary with sources, current Answer, A. 60 minutes. Answer, C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion. <laughs> Answer, C. Prevents DVT. Answer, A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for 6 days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A. Myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. B. Pulmonary embolism due to deep vein thrombosis DVT. C. Anxiety attack due to worries about her baby's health. D. Congestive heart failure due to fluid overload. Answer C. A. Delectasis.
Answer, C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness, nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Answer, A. Pain associated with Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for six days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A. Myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. B. Pulmonary embolism due to deep vein thrombosis DVT. C. Anxiety attack due Answer, C. CK peaks first 12-24 hours followed by the Scott Peaks in 24-36 hours and then the LDH Peaks 3-4 days. Although the timing of initial elevation, peak elevation, and duration of elevation vary with sources, current literature favors letter C. Question 30, on the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. A football player limping and complaining of pain and swelling in the right ankle. C. A 50-year-old man, diaphoretic and complaining of severe chest pain radiating to his jaw. D. A mother with a five year answer, D. Avoid holding her breath during activity. Answer, C. Oral medication therapy. Oral medication administration is a non-invasive, medical treatment for coronary artery disease. Cardiac catheterization isn't a treatment, but a diagnostic tool. Coronary artery bypass surgery and percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty are invasive, surgical treatments. <laughs> Question 30, on the evening shift? Answer, A. Chest pain. The most common symptom of anemia is chest pain, resulting from deprivation of oxygen to the heart. Dyspnea is the second most common symptom, related to an increase in the metabolic needs of the body during anemia. Edema is a later sign of heart failure, often seen after anemia. Palpitations may result from reduced cardiac output producing arrhythmias. Question 15. Alzheimer's disease is the secondary diagnosis of a client admitted with myocardial infarction. Which nursing intervention should appear on this client's plan of care? A. Perform activities of daily living for the client to disease frustration. B. Provide a stimulating environment. C. Establish and maintain Answer, D. Pulmonary. Pulmonary pain is generally described by these symptoms. Musculoskeletal pain only increases with movement. Cardiac and GI pains don't change with respiration. Question 30, on the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? 
A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. A football player. Answer, C. CK peaks. Answer, A. Chest pain. The most common symptom of anemia is chest pain, resulting from deprivation of oxygen to the heart. Dyspnea is the second most common symptom, related to an increase in the metabolic needs of the body during anemia. Edema is a later sign of heart failure, often seen after anemia. Palpitations may result from reduced cardiac output, producing arrhythmias. Answer, C. Prevents DVT. Question 30, on the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. Answer, C. CK peaks first 12-24 hours followed by the Scott Peaks in 24-36 hours and then the LDH Peaks 3-4 days. Although the timing of initial elevation, peak elevation, and duration of elevation vary with sources, current literature favors letter C. Answer, A. Chest pain. Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. The answer C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness, nor is it in Question 30, on the evening shift. Question 1, the nurse should visit which of the following clients first? A. The client with diabetes with a blood glucose of 95 mg slash DL. B. The client with hypertension being maintained on lisinopril. C. The client, question 17, Patrick who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine. A. Decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Prevents shock and relieves pain. C. Dilates coronary blood vessels. D. Helps prevent fibrillation. Question 3. What is the primary reason? Answer, C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Answer, A. Chest pain. The most common symptom of anemia is chest pain, resulting from deprivation of oxygen to the heart. Dyspnea is the second most common symptom, related to an increase in the metabolic needs of the body during anemia. Edema is a later sign of heart failure, often seen after and me. Answer, C. CK peaks. Question 17, Patrick who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine. A. 
decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Prevents shock and relieves pain. C. Dilates coronary blood vessels. D. Helps prevent fibrillation of the heart. Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Answer, C. CK peaks first 12-24 hours, followed by the Scott peaks in 24-36 hours and then the LDH peaks 3-4 days. Although the timing of initial elevation, peak elevation, and duration of elevation vary with sw Question 17, Patrick who is hosp- Question 3, what is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Question 48, with which of the following disorders is jugular vein distension most prominent? A. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. B. Heart failure. C. Me. Dinamotrax. <laughs> Answer, B. Heart failure. Elevated venous pressure exhibited as jugular vein distension, indicates a failure of the heart to pump. JVD isn't a symptom of abdominal aortic aneurysm or pneumotrax. And me, if severe enough, can progress to heart failure, however, in and of itself, and me doesn't cause JVD. Question 21, Mr. Duffy is admitted to the CCU with a diagnosis of R, OMI. He presented in the ER with a typical description of pain associated with an me, and is now cold and clammy, pale and dyspneic. He has an 4 of D5W running, and is complaining of chest pain. Oxygen therapy has not been started, and Answer, A. Pain associated with Question 48, with which of the following disorders is jugular vein distension most prominent? A. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. B. Heart failure. C. Me. Question 30. On the evening shift? Question 21. Mr. Duffy is admitted to the CCU with a diagnosis of R, OMI. He presented in the ER with a typical description of pain associated with an ME, and is now cold and clammy, pale and dyspneic. He has an 4 of D5W running, and is complaining of chest pain. Oxygen therapy has not been started, and he is not on the monitor. Answer, A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest.
pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Answer B is incorrect because it is not a true statement. Answer pain associated with angina is confined to the chest area is incorrect because pain associated with angina can be referred to. Question 48, with which of the following? Question 30. On the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. Question 21. Mr. Duffy is admitted. Answer. A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Answer B is incorrect because it is not a true statement. Question 48. With which of the following disorders is jugular vein distension most prominent? A. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. B. Heart failure. C. Me. Dinamotrax. Answer, A. Chest pain. The most common symptom of in me is chest pain, resulting from deprivation of oxygen to the heart. Dyspnea is the second most common symptom, related to an increase in the metabolic needs of the Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's. Question 17 Patrick, who is hospital? Answer C. CK peaks first 12 24 hours, followed by the Scott peaks in 24 36 hours, and then the LDH peaks 3 4 days. Although the timing of initial elevation, peak elevation, and duration of elevation vary with source. Question 6. Helen, a nurse from the Answer, A. Chest pain. The most common symptom of in me is chest pain, resulting from deprivation of oxygen to the heart. Dyspnea is the second most common symptom, related to an increase in the metabolic needs of the body during in me. Edema is a later sign of heart failure, often seen after in me. Palpitations may result from reduced cardiac output, producing arrhythmias. Answer, D. Avoid holding her breath during activity. Answer, C. CK peaks. Answer, A. Cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy isn't usually related to an underlying heart disease such as atherosclerosis. The etiology in most cases is unknown. CAD and ME are directly related to atherosclerosis. Pericardial effusion is the escape of fluid into the pericardial sac, a condition associated with pericarditis and advanced heart failure. Question 6. Helen a nurse from the maternity unit is floated to the critical care unit because of staff shortage on the evening shift. Which client would be appropriate to assign to this nurse? A client with A. Dopamine drip 4 with vital signs monitored every Answer, A. Chest pain
Answer A. Dilated. Although the cause isn't entirely known, cardiac dilation and heart failure may develop during the last month of pregnancy or the first few months after birth. The condition may result from a pre existing cardiomyopathy not apparent prior to pregnancy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an abnormal symmetry of the ventricles that has an unknown etiology but a strong familial tendency. Myocarditis isn't specifically associated with childbirth. Restrictive cardiomyopathy indicates constrictive pericarditis, the underlying cause is usually myocardial. Question 58 Septal involvement occurs in which type of cardiomyopathy? A. Congestive. B. Dilated. C. Hypertrophic. D. Restrictive. Answer C. A. Delectacy. Question 17 Patrick, who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction, asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine A. Decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Answer C. The client with chest pain and a history of angina. The client with chest pain should be seen first because this could indicate a myocardial infarction. The client in answer A has a blood glucose within normal limits. The client in answer B is maintained on blood pressure medication. Question 21, Mr. Duffy is admitted. Question 58, septal involvement occurs in which type of cardiomyopathy? A. Congestive. B. Dilated. C. Hypertrophic. D. Restrictive. Answer, C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation. Answer, A. 60 minutes. The 60-minute interval is known as door to balloon time for performance of PTCA on a diagnosed ME patient. Question 17 Patrick who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine A. Decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Prevents shock and relieves pain. Question 58. Septal involvement. Answer. C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower ex Answer, A. Dilated. Although the cause isn't entirely known, cardiac dilation and heart failure may develop during the last month of pregnancy or the first few months after birth. The condition may result from a pre-existing cardiomyopathy not apparent prior to pregnancy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an abnormal symmetry of the ventricles that has an unknown etiology but a strong Answer, A. 60 minutes. Question 17, Patrick who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine. A. Decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Prevents shock and relieves pain. C. Dilates coronary blood vessels. D. Helps prevent fibrillation of the heart. Answer, D. Avoid holding her breath during activity.
Answer C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness, nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Question 58. Septal involvement occurs in which type of cardiomyopathy? A. Congestive. B. Dilated. C. Hypertrophic. D. Restrictive. Question 15. Alzheimer's disease is. Answer D. Avoid holding her breath during activity. Answer A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Answer B is incorrect because it is not a true statement. Answer pain associated with angina is confined to the chest area is incorrect because pain associated with angina can be referred to the jaw, the left arm, and Question 48, with which of the following Question 58, septal involvement occurs in which type of cardiomyopathy? A. Congestive B. Dilated C. Hypertrophic D. Restrictive Question 15. Alzheimer's disease is the secondary diagnosis of a client admitted with myocardial infarction. Which nursing intervention should appear on this client's plan of care? A. Perform activities of daily living for the client to disease frustration. B. Provide a stimulating environment. Question 21. Mr. Duffy is admitted. Answer. D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Answer. C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation. Question 30. On the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. A football player limping and complaining of pain and swelling in the right ankle. C. Question 68. Which of the following tests is used most often to diagnose angina? A. Chest X-ray. B. Echocardiogram. C. Cardiac catheterization. D. 12 lead electrocardiogram ECG. Answer A. Dilated. Answer C. 8 electasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction. A known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation in the pleural space. Pulm
Answer, B. Heart failure. Question 68. Which of the following tests is used most often to diagnose angina? A. Chest X-ray. B. Echocardiogram. C. Cardiac catheterization. D. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for six days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A. Myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. Answer, D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Answer, B. Heart failure. Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. Semi-Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Answer, C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation. Answer, B. Heart failure. Question 48. With which of the following disorders is jugular vein distension most prominent? A. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. B. Heart failure. C. Me. Dinamotrax. Answer, A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Answer B is incorrect because it is not a true statement. Answer pain associated with angina is confined to the chest area is incorrect because pain associated with angina can be referred to the jaw, the left arm. Answer, C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of atelectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation in the pleural space. Pulmonary edema usually results from left-sided heart failure, not an ineffective cough. Answer, B. Heart failure. Elevated venous pressure, exhibited as jugular vein distension, indicates a failure of the heart to pump. JVD isn't a symptom of abdominal aortic aneurysm or pneumotrax. And me, if severe enough, 
can progress to heart failure, however, in and of itself, and meat does. Question 48, with which of the following? Answer, A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Answer B is incorrect because it is not a true statement. Answer pain associated with angina is confined to the chest area is incorrect because pain associated with angina. Answer C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous. Answer C. 8. Electasis. Answer B. Heart failure. Elevated venous pressure, exhibited as jugular vein distension, indicates a failure of the heart to pump. JVD isn't a symptom of abdominal aortic aneurysm or pneumotrax. And me, if severe enough, can progress to heart failure, however, in and of itself, and me doesn't cause JVD. Question 48, with which of the following disorders is jugular vein distension most prominent? A. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. B. Heart failure. C. Me. Dinamotrax. Answer, A. Pain associated with. Answer, C. Prevents DVT deep vein thrombosis. Exercise is important for all hospitalized patients to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Muscular contraction promotes venous return and prevents hemostasis in the lower extremities. This exercise is not sufficiently vigorous to increase physical fitness, nor is it intended to prevent bed sores or constipation. Answer, C. 8. Electasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of 8. Electasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation in the pleural space. Pulmonary edema usually results from left-sided heart failure, not an ineffective cough. Although many non-cardiac conditions may cause pulmonary edema. Answer, C. The client with chest. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient in the 27th week of pregnancy has been hospitalized on complete bed rest for 6 days. She experiences sudden shortness of breath, accompanied by chest pain. Which of the following conditions is the most likely cause of her symptoms? A myocardial infarction due to a history of atherosclerosis. b. pulmonary embolism due to deep vein thrombosis DVT. c. anxiety attack due to worries about her baby's health. d. congestive heart failure due to fluid overload. Answer, c. in high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. Semi-Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Answer, A. Dilated. Although the cause isn't entirely known, cardiac dilation and heart failure may develop during the last month of pregnancy or the first few months after birth. The condition may result from a pre-existing cardiomyopathy not apparent prior to pregnancy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an abnormal symmetry of the ventricles that has an unknown etiology but a strong familial tendency. Myocarditis isn't specifically associated with childbirth. Restrictive cardiomyopathy indicates constrict. Answer, C. The client with chest pain and a history of angina.
the client with chest pain should be seen first because this could indicate a myocardial infarction. The client in answer A has a blood glucose within normal limits. The client in answer B is maintained on blood pressure medication. The client in answer D is in no distress. Question 2. A 23-year-old patient. Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. Semi-Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Answer, D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Answer, B. Heart failure. Question 68. Which of the following tests is used most often to diagnose angina? A. Chest X-ray. B. Echocardiogram. C. Cardiac catheterization. <laughs> Answer, D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Answer, C. A. Delectasis. In a client with copped, an ineffective cough impedes secretion removal. This, in turn, causes mucus plugging, which leads to localized airway obstruction, a known cause of A. Delectasis. An ineffective cough doesn't cause pleural effusion fluid accumulation in the pleural space. Pulmonary edema usually results from left sided heart failure, not an ineffective cough. Although many non card Answer, C. In high Fowler. Answer. 
Answer D. Unstable Engine. <laughs> Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. Semi-Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Question 3. What is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Question 17. Patrick who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine A. Decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Prevents shock and relieves pain. C. Dilates coronary blood vessels. D. Helps prevent fibrillation of the heart. <laughs> Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload. <laughs> Question 30, on the evening shift. Question 17, Patrick who is hospitalized following a myocardial infarction asks the nurse why he is taking morphine. The nurse explains that morphine A. Decrease anxiety and restlessness. B. Prevents shock and relieves pain. C. Dilates coronary blood. <laughs> Answer, C. In high Fowler. Question 30, on the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. 
a football player limping and complaining of pain and swelling in the right ankle. C. A 50-year-old man, diaphoritic and complaining of severe chest pain radiating to his Question 17, Patrick who is hospital? Question 3, what is the primary reason for administering morphine to a client with myocardial infarction? A. To sedate the client. B. To decrease the client's pain. C. To decrease the client's anxiety. D. To decrease oxygen demand on the client's heart. Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. Semi-Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Question 30, on the evening shift, the triage nurse evaluates se- Answer, D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Answer, C. The client with chest pain and a history of angina. The client with chest pain should be seen first because this could indicate a myocardial infarction. The client in answer A has a blood glucose within normal limits. The client in answer B is maintained on blood pressure medication. The client in answer D is in no distress. Answer, D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Question 30, on the evening shift. The triage nurse evaluates several clients who were brought to the emergency department. Which in the following clients should receive highest priority? A. An elderly woman complaining of a loss of appetite and fatigue for the past week. B. A football player limping and complaining of pain and swelling in the right ankle. C. A 50-year-old man, diaphoritic and complaining of severe chest pain radiating to his jaw. D. Answer, A. Dilated.
Answer, C. In high fallow. Answer, A. Obtaining an infusion pump for the medication. For nitro infusion requires an infusion pump for precise control of the medication. BP monitoring would be done with a continuous system, and more frequently than every four hours. Hourly urine outputs are not always required. Obtaining serum potassium levels is not associated with nitroglycerin infusion. Answer, D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Answer, C. A patient with a hip. Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. semi Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Answer, A. Obtaining an infusion. Answer, D. Unstable angina. Unstable angina progressively increases in frequency, intensity, and duration and is related to an increased risk of me within 3 to 18 months. Answer, A. Pain associated with Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. semi Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Question 68. Which of the following tests is used most often to diagnose angina? A. Chest X-ray. B. 
echocardiogram, C. Cardiac catheterization, D. 12 lead electrocardiogram ECG. Answer, C. In high Fowler's position. A high Fowler's position promotes ventilation and facilitates breathing by reducing venous return. Lying flat in side-lying positions worsen the breathing and increase workload of the heart. Semi-Fowler's position won't reduce the workload of the heart as well as the Fowler's position will. Answer, A. Dilated. Question 68. Which of the following tests is used most often to diagnose angina? A. Chest X-ray. B. Echocardiogram. C. Cardiac catheterization. D. 12 lead electrocardiogram ECG. Question 15. Alzheimer's disease is... Answer, A. Pain associated with Question 15. Alzheimer's disease is the secondary diagnosis of a client admitted with myocardial infarction. Which nursing intervention should appear on this client's plan of care? A. Perform activities of daily living for the client to disease frustration. B. Provide a stimulating environment. C.
Answer, A. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Pain associated with angina is relieved by rest. Answer B is incorrect because it is not a true statement. Answer pain associated with angina is confined to the chest area is incorrect because pain associated with angina can be referred to the jaw, the left arm, and the back. Pain Question 15. Alzheimer's disease is the secondary diagnosis of a client admitted with myocardial infarction. Which nursing intervention should appear on this client's plan of care? A. Perform activities of daily living for the client to disease frustration. B. Provide a stimulating environment. C. Establish and maintain a routine.